diver, Alec Pierce, scuba tech tips again. Now, Kevin tells me this is a special day because this is the uh, first tech tip we've shot since uh, Scuba 2000 changed uh, ownership. I retired. I live a, I, I, we live, Diane and I live full time with the ranch and ride the horses and uh, run around the fields and all kinds of neat stuff and travel and plans on. Uh, but uh, apparently, this was a big deal. And I have to wear the new shirt, too. This is the official new Scuba 2000 shirt. Apparently, it's uh, anyway, it's nice. It's very nice. So I don't know how, what that all means, but because it, it doesn't affect me, and it doesn't really affect you too much either. But anyway, Ali Pierce Scuba and Tech Tips. And this particular tech tip <clears throat> is a direct response to a couple of requests. We've actually had this request a couple of times from your readers. So first of all, Thank you for the comments and the requests, and secondly, keep them coming, because if we can, if we can fit it in, we will try to answer the questions that you, viewers, ask, okay? Uh, I will add at this point that we get a lot of requests for high-tech stuff, uh, 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 side mounts, which is not really high-tech, side mounts, and, and, and uh, tri-mix, and rebreathers, we might spend a bit of time on that lately. Go to my vintage scuba, I have a really neat rebreather uh, thing in there, uh, and so on. You know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on uh, tech equipment. So if you're a, a, a heavy-duty tech diver, congratulations. But this may not be necessarily the, uh, completely applicable to you. There are many reasons for that, which I've already shared on the Internet uh, on, uh, on tech tips. Uh, so that's going to be a lot. Most of this is directed at the vast majority of divers, the divers who are just doing it for fun up at the cottage on weekends, or on a couple of trips down south, or maybe going on a big trip to the South Pacific, or Grand Cayman, or somewhere else. That's who, that's who these tech tips are designed, just to make your diving maybe a little easier, you know, a little more comfortable, maybe a little safer, I don't know, just for fun. So anyway, this particular tech tip, threading the tank band, sounds really simple. Uh, however, I can understand uh, the reason for the questions, because I have, I have uh, watched divers I've watched my instructors struggle with threading a tank bed. So uh, it's not quite as easy as it looks. <clears throat> First piece of advice, don't unthread it. If you don't unthread it, then you don't have to rethread it. Uh, second piece of advice, <clears throat> if you are working with tanks and backpacks a lot, then practice this a few times so that when it does happen, because it can happen, your tank band becomes unthreaded, you can put it back together safely. What are we talking about? We're talking about the tank band. That is the band that attaches the backpack or buoyancy compensator to the tank. Here's an example. This, uh, here's a BC. doesn't matter what BC it is, because 90% of the BCs today use exactly the same band, certainly the same style, if not the same actual manufacturer. So here's a standard uh, uh, buoyancy compensator, BCD, and, uh, and it has on the back, of course it has the, most, most do, not all, some have soft packs, but this one has a hard plastic pack on there, and then it has a band. This is the band, as you know, that goes around the tank. On the tank, off you go, right? Um, so this is the band we're talking about, and specifically we're talking about this end of the band right down here, that can actually come apart, actually you can unthread it, take it all apart. That's what I'm saying. Don't do that if you're going to possibly avoid it. Okay, so most BCs are exactly the same as this. They have the band, and it fastens into the buoyancy compensator in different ways. You will have to decide, you have to look at your own BC or a backpack, whatever you're using. You have to look at your own and decide exactly how it goes through the BC. That's not critical. It usually just goes through a couple of holes and is held firmly in place. Uh, uh, but if you want to take the band completely out for some reason, I can't think of why, except to replace it. But if you do, you'll have to look at your own big CD, your own pack here, and determine how that happens. Some just pull in and out. Some go through a couple of loops. Some are actually held in there by a clamp, a couple of screws, and so on. But the backpack, uh, uh, all backpacks or BCs have a band just like this. Uh, here's the buckle and, uh, and the big stainless steel uh, uh, cam, or call that the cam on there. And then most of them as well have, have a piece of rubber on the strap itself. That piece of rubber is designed so when you tighten this nylon band against the tank, the ba this band will actually grab the tank. You see, this is nylon. It's slippery. So even if you tighten it on tightly, this nylon can sometimes slip. But if you have a piece of rubber on there, most of them have a rubber sleeve of some sort. You see the rubber sleeve there. Then you tighten it on there, the rubber gets compressed against the tank, and it stays in place. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. What do I mean by rethreading? Now here's another one here. This is another example. This is a backpack, just a pack, with the same band in it. 
Now, this is pretty common, this particular style. In fact, many buoyancy compensators, certainly certainly rental BCs and, and the, the what we're going to call the economical, or the less expensive entry level, if you like. I don't like that because those entry level BCs work perfectly fine for experienced divers too, but whatever. The less expensive BCs will often have exactly this pack inside underneath the BC. You can't see it, but it's in there if you look. And it has that same backpack on the back, or band on the back. Same buckle. Okay, same stainless steel cam, and there's here's here's the piece of rubber sleeve that slides back and forth to grab against the tank. So this is exactly what we're talking about. Now I want to share a couple of things about this first of all, and uh, and uh, the first thing I want to share with you is how to actually put this on the tank. Because there's a few things about that that can make it make make it a little bit difficult or interesting. In fact, one thing about it can make it unsafe. Let me show you what you do here. When you're going to put your buoyancy compensator onto your tank. <clears throat> the, the, uh, my suggestion is if you take out this long end, this long end goes through the buckle, and I'll show you that in a moment. Take out that long end. Don't take out any more than that. Don't undo any more of the buckle, okay? And then <clears throat> slip the, uh, the band over the tank like so, and you can stretch it out so it fits over the tank. Because there are different size tanks. I don't know if you knew that, but there's six and three quarter inch, seven inch, seven and a quarter, eight inch, and so on. So there could be different sizes. Fortunately, this is very easy to adjust. So you slip that down over the tank. In most cases, the buoyancy compensator will have something that, that helps you to determine where it goes on the tank. But we're not going to worry about that today. For this purpose, is you'll decide that yourself. So now you've got your band on the tank. A couple of things, here's where it becomes important. A couple of things you have to watch. First of all, you need to be sure that the band is straight. You don't want the band like this. See? Uneven. You see, it has to be straight. So make sure the band is straight around the tank. Now take the loose end, hold the BC or, or, or the or the backpack tightly, pull it, pull that loose end really, really tightly like that. And you can actually fasten it down. It has velcro on it. Okay? Now you have it in place. Now you have to lock it in place. And that's what this buckle and that, that stainless steel uh, 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 can is for. Now you got to push this over like this and push hard. Ah, it snaps in place. Okay, now if you had to push hard and it snaps down like that, you hear it? Then it's good and tight. If you haven't made this tight on there, and, and, and you put this over and it goes like this, up and through it, one finger, it's not tight. And this will come out, look, you see? So that's what you need to do, folks. You need to pull that loose end that we took out really tightly, and then take this in your hand, hold it all firmly, and get this up on the wall. Good. Now that's good and tight. Okay, now what's this for? What are you gonna do with this? Well, that's only there for one reason. This cam, this, this cam action that locks it in place is pretty good. But if this got accidentally pulled or hit, it could pop off. So what they've done is they put this extra strap and there's a slot in the end. So now what I suggest you do is pull the cam gap back just a little wee bit. Don't actually loosen the locking action. Pull it back a little wee bit. Now stick that loose end through that last slot, pull out like so, you see, now snap it back over, and now this will Velcro down, just like that, holds it in place. So now, you see the cam, this portion here, is protected, so it can't pop open accidentally. This place is so long, it's not going anywhere, and you're perfectly safe, ready to go. I want to add one more thing. These are nylon. Nylon is a material, like cloth. It stretches. It particularly stretches when it gets wet. You with me on this? You see what's happening here? So when you have a brand new BC, and you first put this on firmly, as I've shown you, it can loosen once you jump in the ocean. And it, it can, as, as it gets wet, it soaks up moisture. That nylon can stretch a little bit. And you may find 10, 50 minutes into your dive that all of a sudden your tank is slipping, which is not good. Now, most modern BCs have a mechanism or a, a way, a strap or something to keep it from slipping right out, which used to be the case years and years ago. We didn't have any hoses on or anything else, and the tank would slip out. Yeah, not fun. Yank on your mouth. It doesn't do that anymore. But still, it can be an issue. So in order to prevent that, certainly for the first little while, until that nylon gets stretched as far as it's going to get stretched, get it wet before you put it on. That's right. Take your BC and specifically the band, not the BC, but the specifically this nylon band, and get it wet. Either pour some water on it, or if it's, if it's possible, dip it in the ocean or the lake or wherever you are. Dip it for two minutes and let it soak for five minutes. So now the nylon is wet. Now, when you feel oh, you've stretched it and it won't stretch anymore. Now, you only have to do that for a while. I see divers who have BCs that are four or five or six years old, and they've used them many, many, many times, and they still dip it in the water before they put it on. 
no problem with that. They can do that, but there's no need to. I, I think maybe they didn't understand why they were told in the beginning to dip it in the water. Now you understand. When the band is new, new nylon, when it gets wet, it'll stretch. So while it's new, I don't know what that means, three dives, ten dives, whatever you decide. But for the first, let's say, ten dives, you should dip this in the water and let it soak for five minutes before you put it on the tank. Now after you've done that for a ten or a dozen dives, you don't need to anymore. Okay, you don't need to soak it anymore. It stretches as much as it will. So that's the band that we're talking about today. Now, what's the problem? Why am I why am I doing this video on something that's obviously so simple? Now here's the problem. Here's another band. I've taken this one off of a tank. And here it is in, in, in its proper position. The Velcro is nailed down. And here's the buckle and all things held together just beautifully. This is obviously a little bit worn. I'm not sure if you can zoom in here a little bit, Kevin. I'll try to hold it still. But this is the band we're talking about. Maybe if I turn it horizontally, it'll make more sense. Same band, you see? Exactly the same. So what's the big deal? Well, here's the big deal. When you take off that long tail that I mentioned earlier, you can pull that out. That's okay. It's okay. Put it over the tank. Can't pull it tight and cam it down. Here's the problem. That end goes through the buckle. Goes through the buckle twice, as a matter of fact. You see? Like this. And now you have a buckle with three slots in it. Three slots in it. Now, you know what this slot up here is for? That's to hold the very tail end after you get the band on tail end. You put it through, and you pull it snugly, you stick it on the belt. You know what that slot is for? What are these other two slots for? Well, obviously, that you can see here, here here's the belt. It's, it's been twisted through there, and that's where, that's where that twisting camming action takes place, right in here. And I mentioned, once you pull this out of here, now you have to figure out how to get it back in. Now, some of you guys have been diving for a while. You're going to say, what's he wasting time on this for? Because there's instructions on the side of the buckle. Some of the buckles, not this one, but some of the buckles <clears throat> actually have on the side of the buckle, right in the plastic, they have the little wiring diagram. Well, threading diagram, if you like. And you can look at that threading diagram, and you can see how the nylon is supposed to go. To you. It's confusing, too. The very fact that they put that on there is an indication that this is not the easiest thing in the world to remember. Hence the video. So bear with me. So I have a simple, simple way to help you remember. If your tank band comes completely apart like this one, how do you get it back together? Okay, Lay it out in front of you. Simple. Just like that. I'm going to pick it up here. Are you ready, Kevin? Here we go. So the first thing you do is turn the cam, the buckle, the plastic bar, all the way back against the buckle. Back as far as it'll go. Okay? Flip it over. Backward. This is the way it is when it's on the tank, right? So flip it all the way back. You getting this, Kevin? Do you, want, do you need me to slow down? Okay, so flip it all the way back. Now I can pick up simple. Take the end, make sure it's straight, take the end, and put it through the middle hole, and then put it back out the end hole. Well, not the end at the tip, the end here. Let me do that again for you, okay, just to be sure. This is really very simple. If you do the steps properly, here's your buckle. Uh oh, darn it, a strap came out. Okay, here's what you do take the buckle. Flip it right back against itself. Okay? Now there are two slots. There's a slot on the end. We're going to forget that one. Put your thumb over it. So you have two slots. Put the end of the strap through the middle slot and pull it back out through the end slot. Done. Flip the buckle back over where it belongs and you're done. Now that sounds so simple. As I said earlier, would you believe I have watched dive instructors on our training pool and on open water dives struggle? and curse for 10 minutes trying to get that thing figured out. <laughs> all right. So there's a simple little tip. And now your cam is all ready to go. Just like so, put it on the tank, pull it tight, hold it, snap this over, snap it down good and hard, put that over in place, and you're all set to go. Just that easy. One more small thing I want to share with you. Look, <clears throat> I mentioned earlier <clears throat> that most of these bands have a rubber strap, a piece of rubber on the strap somewhere. That's to hold the band firmly against the tank, okay? Here's a small thing that I've noticed many times in the past. This rubber strap will slide on the band. See, it'll slide. See that? It slides on there. Did you catch that? So now, when you go to snap this over, watch. See? It snaps, but it snaps against the rubber. Can you zoom in there, Kevin? Can you see that? Can you see how that cam has not snapped down tightly against the band? The rubber's in the way. So this is not pulled tightly. It can actually pop open pretty easily, even with the Velcro in place. See? 
tank goes in. So you be careful, you guys. When you put your tank on, take a second and be sure that this rubber strap, which is important, it's a good idea, when you put it on, is well away from the camp. So when you can this over, here's the rubber over here. That's not underneath the buckle. Put that in place. Okay, so what do we got here? If it's brand new, soak it for five minutes and it won't stretch. Make sure the piece of rubber, if yours slides, some don't, but if yours is slides, make sure it's out of the way. Undo the end, the keeper strap, I call that. Get the cam on the tank in the proper position. Pull it tight, snap it over hard. Put the band in place. You're a hero. Don't unthread it. If it comes unthreaded accidentally, you'll have to rewatch this video. Okay, guys, I hope that was uh, helpful to somebody out there anyway. And to the folks that asked for this to be done, I appreciate that. I hope that answers your questions. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierce Scuba, Tech Tips.